is Jordan Machado, aspiring biologist and hopefully a future herpetologist with Snake for Grace. And today we're going to be covering something that some people have actually asked us about a few times. How do you safely ship a reptile? is actually gonna to be to acquire the necessary materials. And I got everything over here and I'll actually tell you where to find these specific materials because there are certain standards that we need to follow when shipping a reptile so that we can do that safely. So if you've ever gotten a reptile, you might've noticed that they come usually in a little box. And I'm gonna show you guys why we have this kind of box and why you can't just use any kind of box. It's a very specific box. So first we need to make sure that we have an approved box for shipping reptiles and that is going to come with insulation and that is to kind of protect them from the outside environment. In addition to that, usually we will have different kinds of packaging materials. You can use anything from paper towel to newspaper. I have seen some people use packaging peanuts. I don't personally recommend it just because it doesn't actually hold them in place and there is always the risk of it having um, some toxins in there. So avoid packaging peanuts. Um, you can get these free shipping label protectors at any FedEx near you. And you'll also want to make sure you check the temperatures of where you are going to be shipping your animals to and from. So make sure to check your temperature where it's starting. And you also want to check the temperature of where they're going to be. And the reason you want to do that is that when you're getting your materials, you might need to get some gel packs. You might need some cold packs or you might actually need a hot pack if they're going somewhere where it's chilly. And if it's somewhere that has a certain temperature, maybe it's too hot where it's first going, but then it gets too cold where it's arriving, then I'll also show you kind of how to manage that. So a really great place to get some materials are tsksupply.com, but a lot of shipping companies for reptiles specifically also do sell their own branded boxes. So you can find some at uline.com. You can also find some from reptiles to you and even redline shipping. Now, one of the reasons that you kind of need to get the materials before buying a shipping label is because you actually need to include the dimensions of the box on the shipping label. So there are different prices depending on the weight of the box and the dimensions of the box. So this box is a seven by seven by six inches. So we're just gonna go ahead and put this together. And so when building the box, you want to make sure that the measurement of the box is on the outside. So there is a proper way to do this because they want to be able to see that you are using the proper materials and then they can verify that the dimensions of the box is what you paid for on your shipping label. So on the bottom, I'll actually just make sure I put the tape here horizontally. I don't cover these sides because I want there to be a little bit of ventilation and air circulation into the box. And after we get that, the box is like this. Don't ship an animal just like this. We need to make sure that we make it properly insulated. That's what the foam inserts are for. So usually you'll get two that are the size and dimension of the top and bottom. So you put the big one first. Make sure it goes all the way in. And then you're gonna have some slightly smaller ones. And these are the ones that are gonna go on the side. So when you put one in, it's not gonna cover the entire side. And the reason is because you're supposed to take the next one and you slide it in the corner. So each one is kind of securing itself into place. So then it stays nice and snug. If it was the full length, then we would just kind of have loose pieces of styrofoam. There we go. So the box is now ready to put a snake inside. So if you don't get pre-punched deli cups, those are the ones that come with air holes already built in, you'll have to get a hole puncher to make the holes yourself. I usually use 1 16th of an inch hole punch just because that gives me a nice tiny little hole and makes sure that they can breathe and that they can't get out or possibly hurt themselves by shoving their cute little snoots in that hole. So, hey buddy, let's put you back inside and make sure that this is nice and closed. Also want to make sure that the inside of the deli cup has some cushioning so that they can be nice and snug. You don't wanna just put them in the deli cup with nothing inside. I personally like to use sandy chips, but some people will also use uh, sphagnum moss, reptibark, and even eco-earth depending on the species that they are shipping. But since we do hog noses, sandy chips is a really, really good one. And if they are, for example, going into blue, I'll even sometimes include a soft, damp paper towel 
towel just on top of them to just have them there, a little extra humidity, help them feel a little more comfortable during their ride. So let's make sure we get this nice and closed. Go around the edges. We don't want this little guy getting out. And a pro tip is actually use some of your packaging tape and just tape the sides down if you think that it's not a snap-on good deli All right, cup. so your little cute noodle should be inside securely in a deli cup. Of course, some people do also use snake bags and they're usually cotton bags, but that's more common with larger species of snakes. But we're just gonna be showing you how to do this with the deli cup. So you make sure you wanna put the baby in the middle and the reason that we make sure the deli cup is a similar size to the box is we don't want a giant box where the baby can be shaking around. However, if you're shipping a larger quantity of snakes, then that's a whole other thing. You can use bigger boxes because you want to be able to accommodate that in addition to accommodate the weight temperature fluctuations. Once you get the little baby inside, we're going to use some packaging material and we're going to stuff all four corners because we don't want the deli cup bouncing around. We don't want him to get hurt during transit. So our goal is to make sure he is nice, snug, and secure. And I like to crumple it up so that it's nice and dense. And it also does allow for good air circulation. So I'll put one in that corner. And I'll go ahead and get another piece and put it in the opposite corner. Now it is a little snug this way, but it's still loose on that end. And that's why I go ahead and put packaging on all four corners. Okay, so now that we have all four corners, I can come in here and gently wiggle the deli cup and it is not moving. So that means I have it nice and secure. That's gonna help him stay the safest during transit. Now, in addition to that, something that's really important is not just to secure the deli cup, but make sure you have a lot of packaging materials on top, especially if you're gonna be using cold packs or heat packs. So we wanna make sure that we basically cover this. Now, it doesn't have to be a bunch of tiny pieces. We just wanna have at least four different pieces of packaging in there to make sure that it feels nice and snug. And I'll tell you what. All right, so there's one piece. We want to make sure we cover all of it. In case something does move around, I want there to be distance between the deli cup and the top of the container and the top of the box. All right, so now that we have four, there's plenty of room here, it's nice and snug, but mainly I have a guaranteed distance between the top of his deli cup and the top of the box. So now we're gonna kind of cover the differences of using a gel pack, a heat pack, and a cold pack, and why you will sometimes actually use both together. are okay though in the place you're shipping them from and the place that they are arriving usually this would be everything you have to do with packing you would take your last foam insert you would cover it on top make sure that it's nice and snug and properly fit onto the bottom and then you would close this and proceed to the next step however I am going to show you what to do in case that the temperatures do require a little more finesse now let's say that it's the summer and it's actually really really hot so you're gonna do the exact same thing as you would with a heat pack, but you're going to use a cold pack. They have a bunch of different types of cold packs. Usually they are just called gel packs, but a really good one is actually from cryopack.com. A lot of reptile shipping companies will also sell the heat packs and the cold packs. So if you do need a cold pack, make sure you check the temperatures. You can get one as well, along with the box, the deli cups, and all of the other supplies that you need. The goal is not to keep the snake cold, it's to prevent them from getting too hot. So these don't usually come with adhesive, but you're gonna tape it the exact same way. You put it here, we're gonna take the tape, cover it here and cover it here. And then it's gonna be nice and stuck to the top. You're gonna flip it upside down and you're gonna put this inside facing that way. So now the snake is not in direct contact with the cold pack, but it's gonna be releasing gentle chilly air that will make sure the snake doesn't overheat really cool about these is that they're actually called uh, cryophase packs. Essentially, if it gets too hot, it'll turn into liquid and it reabsorbs some of that heat, preventing it from spreading into the rest of the box. But if it's too cold, it'll go from liquid to solid. So it actually absorbs some of that cold. Essentially, gel packs are your best friend. If you 
when in doubt, have a gel pack. You can't do any harm. It is pretty much only gonna be protecting the baby. Okay, so baby is packaged, we're ready to go. Snake is good to go. Get your last insert with heat cool or gel pack or neither. And then we wanna make sure it is nice and snug. So I'm gonna just put that here and we are going to close this. Now with the top, I do want to make sure that it is nice and stable. So we're gonna take the tape, we're gonna close it here and we're gonna close it over here on the sides. We're basically making an H shape. Now the reason, the bottom, we have the ventilation to help air circulate. Now the top, we want to kind of keep that temperature inside. Now very important is somewhere on the box, you have to make sure that you write the scientific name of the species you're shipping, the common name of the species that you're shipping, and how many are in there. And that is because of the Lacey Act. Essentially, anything that is alive has to be very, very plainly explained. So for a hog nose, that would be Heterodon nasicus. That is their scientific name. Common name is going to be Western hog nose. And for this little box, that's gonna be quantity one. Once we got that, we're gonna go ahead and print out our shipping label. And you're gonna fold it nice and neatly so that you can see the barcode and all of the information on the shipping label, or you can just cut it so that that's the relevant information. Usually you'll have a bunch of extra white space. And you're going to go ahead and pull open the purple tab. And this helps prevent the shipping label from getting damaged or smudged or just wet. Then we're gonna go ahead and open it over here and we're gonna slip the shipping label inside facing outwards. And once we get that, we go ahead and we close that. We're going to peel the bottom off here and then we'll go back to our box. And this is important, you don't want your shipping label to cover the Lacey Act requirements. So make sure to think about that as you deal with your placement. So in this case, I'm actually going to place it like this. I'm gonna put the first part over here. Once I get that there, I'll go ahead and peel this, I'll go ahead and peel the second part of the tape and then I will make sure to put it over here. Another way would also just be to have it over here on the side. You just wanna make sure that the label is properly on top of the box. Find a website. You could do a quick quote or when you're done, you can click book a shipment. So this is gonna be the from address. This is your address. Ship to a FedEx facility in this case. You just put in the zip code, click search, and it will tell you facilities that can accept animals. Then you would just select this or this. If they didn't want to do that, then they can click new address and first name, their last name, it needs to match the ID because they will be checking that, and then the actual address that they will be delivering to. Shipping to hubs or FedEx facilities is safer because they stay in a climate controlled area. Generally, that is the only way that most buyers will guarantee live arrival. And then you can also click local weather and it will tell you what the weather is. So that can allow you to properly check if you need to prep. In this case, we would definitely need some cold packs. Then here are the dimensions of the box, put the weight of the box. If you want to sign them up for email notifications, you just put the emails in here. And then after that, put the description, one Western hognose in this case, and we'll click get rates. And after that, it's just buying and printing the label. Mm -hmm.